Hey, welcome to the Steam Shop. We're back at part two with the Apollo 50th anniversary series. And I'm super excited because we're going to be building the super cool Saturn V rocket set. This is going to be a super big rocket and I'm really excited. So let's get started and blast off. Saturn V is the biggest rocket we have ever built. And this Lego set is no different. It's 1,969 pieces. That's a lot of pieces. So I'm gonna to try to null this out across my entire table, but if it still fills up the entire table and there's pieces left over, it may end up all around me. <laughs> Okay, so this is really cool. There appears to be a lot of information that it includes about the rocket. It has the information about the Apollo program, the rocket itself, and then the entire timeline, as well as all of the designers. And that's really cool. But anyways, let's try to continue building. Well, I'm going to be building this Lego set of the super cool Saturn V rocket. I'm going to be saying a multitude of facts about different things, such as information about the Saturn V, the Apollo mission, some other moon missions, and some super cool, amazing, and kind of funny facts that you probably don't know about. So if you want to hear them, make sure to watch all the way through. So since the bags were numbered, um, I'm going to finish out the knowing of the rest of these pieces, um, since these are all the small, super tiny pieces. Um, but I'm going to try to build everything in parts, um, according to the numbers on the bags, since it's also how the book has it here. And so that's going to make it a lot easier <laughs> instead of me trying to know out every single piece across the table and the floor and whatever. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna continue working on this part. The first stage of the Saturn V rocket, also known as the SIC stage, had five super large F1 engines. It burned for only about 2.5 minutes, and that's all it took to take the Apollo spacecraft to a height of 3.8 miles, or 6.12 kilometers. During the launch of the rocket, the noise levels and shockwaves that were generated were so powerful that all spectators had to be kept at least 3 miles or 4.3 kilometers away. The first stage used 203,400 gallons or 770,000 liters of kerosene fuel and 318,000 gallons or 1,204,000 liters of liquid oxygen. That is a whole lot of fuel. And that amount of fuel produced 7.7 .7 million pounds of thrust.
it burned more fuel in one second than the entire amount it took for Charles Lindbergh to cross the Atlantic Ocean. The F1 engines used on the Saturn V is still the world's largest liquid-fueled rocket engine. The engines were retested recently by NASA to help better understand the engines to help try to send humans back to the moon. And they're using to design new engines called the F-1B for the brand new SLS rocket, which stands for Space Launch System. The Saturn V went from paper design to flight in just six years. That's super, super quick. Saturn V's were built, but only 13 were flown. Two of them were trials, 10 carried human crew, and one launched Skylab, our very first space station. Speaking of Skylab, Skylab was actually damaged from the launch's extreme vibrations and a malfunction during deployment, where one solar panel and a sunshade was lost, and the other solar panel was jammed against the side. Okay, third bag done. Now we're on to number four. Um, we're almost done with the first stage. I'm super excited because this is literally one of the most complex builds I have ever done. Um, so let's get going. The Saturn V that launched the Skylab station only had two stages, while the one that launched the Apollo missions had three. Even though Saturn V had some complications with its payloads, such as Skylab as mentioned before, and Apollo 6 which experienced three engine malfunctions, all of the launches of Saturn V went without losing payload. Fully 
wheels, the Saturn V weighed 2,950 tons, which is the same weight as 400 elephants. completely filled with fuel, if the Saturn V exploded, it would release two kilotons of TNT energy. To compare, the Little Boy atomic bomb, which was the bomb that was used at Hiroshima, exploded with 15 kilotons of TNT energy. The Saturn V program cost around 6.5 billion US dollars at the time, which is equal to 35 to 40 billion US dollars today. Saturn V remains the only launch vehicle that has been used to launch people outside of low Earth orbit. It holds the record of the heaviest load and the maximum load capacity of 310,000 pounds or 140,000 kilograms for the low Earth orbit, which includes the third stage and the unburned fuel to send Apollo to the moon. Some people think that the accident of Apollo 1 happened on a Saturn V, but on Apollo 1, the command module was destroyed by fire during our training exercise that was atop a Saturn 1B rocket, which killed Virgil Grissom, Ed White, and Roger Chaffee, who were supposed to be the astronauts on the first manned Apollo mission. While the USA is the only country to put humans on the moon, the US, USSR, and China have had successful landers and rovers. Japan and India have had orbiters. Israel tried to have a rover and they got into orbit successfully, but their rover wrecked. And right now, India is sending a rover to the South Pole and it will get there in September. It just launched this week. The command module, where the astronauts actually were in the Saturn V rocket, was only 10 feet and 7 inches or 3.23 meters tall.
All right, so we got bag number five done, and now we're on to bag number six, which I believe will be the last part for the first stage. So let's get going. The Saturn I rocket, which was one of Saturn V's predecessors, had three test flights that had second and third stages filled with 23,000 gallons or 87,064 liters of water. The first test flight simply ejected the second and third stages at an altitude of 84.8 miles or 136.47 kilometers, which then crashed down onto the surface. The second test flight reached an altitude of 65 miles or 104.61 kilometers, where the second and third stages were blown up intentionally, where the water ballast from the stages was released into the upper atmosphere. It was an experiment called Project High Water. The release of the water produced a massive ice cloud in lightning-like effects. The third test flight, they again exploded the second and third stages filled with water but instead at an altitude of 104 miles, or 167 kilometers, where the water was released into the ionosphere, forming a massive cloud of ice particles several miles in diameter. A car that gets 30 miles per gallon, or 12.75 kilometers per liter, could drive around the world around 800 times with the amount of fuel the Saturn V used for the Apollo mission. stage contained only fuel. All of the provisions for the astronauts was in the service module, which contained propulsion, electrical power, and storage for various consumables required during a mission. The command module had a heat shield to protect the astronauts from re-entry into the atmosphere, which causes such high heat that it can melt most metals. And the first stage is finally built, and look how big this thing is, and we still have multiple stages left to go. I'm having so much fun building this, and I can't wait to build the rest. So. Let's start building the second stage, starting with bag number seven. The second stage, also known as the SII stage, had five J2 engines, which is different than the first stage's F1 engines by size and the fuel used. It brought the spacecraft to about 115 miles, or 185 kilometers, in about 6 minutes at a speed of 15,500 miles per hour, or 24,945 kilometers per hour.
It used 80,000 gallons or 303,000 liters of liquid oxygen and 260,000 gallons or 984,000 liters of liquid hydrogen fuel. When they first tested the F1 and J2 engines, the shockwaves shattered the windows of nearby houses. That must have been really scary for anyone who lived in those houses. The Saturn V rocket was 364 feet or 111 meters tall, which is 8 feet or 2.5 meters taller than the ISS is long, 49 feet or 15 meters taller than Big Ben, 59 feet or 18 meters taller than the Statue of Liberty, but less than half the height of the Eiffel Tower. Without a stabilizer, the Saturn V was 37 feet or 10 meters in diameter. The famous transmission of the Apollo 11 landing was done through something called the Deep Space Network, which also makes all the other transmissions we get, like the Voyager spacecrafts and the Hubble Space Telescope, possible. And this network was built by a woman named Susan Finley, who was a part of an all-female team of coders that were integral to the Apollo 11 mission, including Margaret Hamilton. NASA is actually offering to give away a Block 1 Saturn V rocket, which means that it's one that didn't have humans on it, which were the Block 2 rockets, to any university, library, etc. that wants one, but they would just have to pay for shipping. And the Saturn V rocket is so big that it would cost $250,000.
The first Apollo mission that was launched on a Saturn V rocket was Apollo 4, which was in 1967. Apollo 4 and Apollo 6, which was the mission right after, were the only Apollo missions launched that didn't have human crew on it. All right, we have one more bag and the second stage will be done and that's bag number 10. So let's get going. The first Saturn V launched with the crew was Apollo 8. On this mission, the astronauts only orbited the moon. Apollo 9 tested the lander by flying it in Earth's orbit, but did not land. Apollo 10 tested the lander by flying it in lunar orbit, but they didn't attempt to land either. It wasn't until Apollo 11 did astronauts land on the moon. From there, Apollos 12, 14, 15, 16, and 17 landed on the moon using the Saturn V rocket. Apollo 13 launched, but wasn't able to land due to a problem with the Apollo spacecraft. This rocket was originally called the Saturn C5 until it was renamed to just Saturn V. The vehicle assembly building at the Kennedy Space Center that was built specifically for the Saturn V is so big that clouds can form inside of it. We have the second stage done. And so now let's put it on the first stage. I'm gonna make an even bigger rocket. <laughs> ah, that is so cool. <laughs> this is such a tall rocket. It's not even funny. <laughs> Oh, that is so cool. That is so cool. All right. Now that we have the second stage all done and on the first stage of Saturn V rocket, let's move on to the third stage with bag number 11. The third stage, also known as the SIVB stage, had a single J2 engine.
It first burned for two minutes to place itself into an orbit at about 115 miles or 185 kilometers at about 17,500 miles per hour or 28,163 kilometers per hour. After a check on equipment, it reignited and burned for about 112 minutes at about 25,000 miles per hour or 4,233 kilometers per hour to escape Earth's orbit. The third stage used the same fuel that the second stage used, liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen fuel. It used 19,359 gallons or 73,280 liters of liquid oxygen and 66,770 gallons or 252,750 liters of liquid hydrogen fuel. And the third stage is built. So now it's time to put it on the rest of the rocket. And there we go. We have all three stages of the Saturn V built. But we still have one more bag left, bag number 12. So let's get started. The purpose of the escape rocket is to pull the command module to safety in the event of a malfunction during launch. The escape rocket is attached to the command module by a metal structure and the rocket ignites at certain angles to not damage the command module. The service module used Arizine 50 and nitrogen tetroxide as fuel, which produced 20,500 pounds of thrust. The SPS engine was used to get the Apollo spacecraft into and out of lunar orbit, as well as mid-course adjustments between the moon and the earth. Just before re-entry into the earth's atmosphere, the service module is separated from the command module and it burned up in the atmosphere. But would you look how big this thing is? I couldn't even see the top of the rocket when I was getting this piece on. This is so cool and we're not done yet. As you can see, we have a bunch of pieces still left. So let's start build building those pieces.
At 24,000 feet or 7.3 kilometers from our surface, the landing system of the command module was engaged. The landing system included two special parachutes called drogue parachutes, three pilot parachutes, three main parachutes, and three inflation bags for uprighting the capsule if necessary. And the build is finished. We have the entire Saturn V rocket. And we have a tiny lunar module and even the command module that splashed down. And this is super, super, super cool. I really, really, really love this set. One of the really cool things with it is that it can actually separate like the actual Saturn V did. They even featured part of the process on the back of their box. But I'm gonna act it out for you guys because this is so cool. So, the Saturn V launches. First stage separates. And then the escape rocket jettisons off since it's not useful anymore. And there would still be a command module over here on top of the service module. And it keeps going. And then the second stage separates. And then from here, the service module separates and the fairings fall off from around the lunar module. Then from here, what happens is that the service module turns around, and attaches to the lunar module, which then gets taken off of the third stage. An interesting fact is that there's actually five of these third stages still orbiting around the sun near the Earth. Then after this, it flies all the way into lunar orbit, where then the service module and command module separates from the lunar module. The lunar module then lands on the moon. There's one astronaut that is on the command module and that was in on Apollo 11, that was Michael Collins. There's two astronauts that were on the moon, Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong. And then once the lunar module was on the moon and they did all the things that was necessary on their mission, only the top part of the lunar module came back up from the lunar surface. Then reconnected back with the service module for Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong to go back into the service command module and then the top part of the lunar module was jettisoned from the service and command module and then eventually crashed back into the moon. And then this part did one last orbit around the moon and then came back home where then, right before re-entry, the service module and the command module separated. We need part of that. One moment. <laughs> there you go. And then it came back in for re-entry. And then it 
splash down into one of our oceans. For then there was multiple inflatables to make sure that the capsule stayed upright. Then they were taken in by a ship and they were actually quarantined for 21 days because we weren't for sure if there was any like special moon disease or bacteria or something. And then 50 years later, we are still celebrating them today. I'm gonna to try to put this all back together and then I'm gonna do my full review for this set. I really, really, really like this set. I would give a 99.99 to the moon and back percent amazingness. There's other things that I like that I didn't mention earlier, such as I really like how on the back of the box they give information um, like where the Apollo actually landed on the moon, as well as information about the stages, as well as all the information that were, was in the back of, the, not in the back, but in the front of the booklet. Um, I did run into some complications though, such as the second stage and first stage separation was kind of hard to do. That's probably because there's four clips on the inside when compared to the third stage, there's only two clips. Um, another thing is that if you actually um, um, tilt it at too steep of an angle, the third stage can actually fall off. Um, another thing that I ran into was that when I was building a part of the first stage, one of the bags was missing a part. Um, but luckily in a later bag, either because they give extra pieces or because the piece was misplaced, there was a piece exactly like the one I was missing, so I was able to replace it um, and get that all put together. Uh, one thing that's not really a complication, it is kind of a funny thing, was that in the booklet, um, when it talks about the lunar module, it showed three astronauts on the moon. On the box, I have it right, there's only two astronauts that were on the moon. Um, otherwise than that, I really like the set. Another thing that I also really liked is that when you were building the rocket, you were actually building the fuel tanks inside of the rocket, which I personally really like because you could even like take off a panel and show the inside, which is really, really cool. Um, I would totally recommend the set, especially to anyone who loves space. And when I was building the set, you can really tell how monumental of a feat this was and how it really was a giant leap for humankind. And it also shows that when you have a bunch of people that are working together who have a lot of talent and intelligence and a lot of hard work, you can build things that are absolutely amazing and you can go super far. It really shows dream, design, and build. And then you can put it over. <laughs> Just stand on my tippy toes. This is so hard to see what's going on. Hold on, technical difficulty.